everyone and welcome back to Tishnews GT Sport Driving School. We're on episode number 9 and it's all to do with defending. Now in episode 8 we looked at overtaking, whether that was actually making a move on somebody, using slipstream, going for the lunge or whatever that might be or whether we use strategy to get past an opponent. Well defending is all about, you know, making sure those overtakes actually don't happen in the first place or ways you can potentially, you know, save that position. Uh, that you might be in leading the way from an opponent. So we're going to look at the most obvious one, of course, taking the inside line. We've got stopping on the apex, potentially boxing an opponent, and you'll see that on the straights. Uh, illegal move, but uh, it can frustrate the opponent quite a lot. Uh, we've got the cutback, got strategy again, of course, with tire saving. Uh, and then we, of course, have breaking the slipstream. While that might not necessarily stop an overtake, it presents itself making the overtake harder which is what you're trying to do at the end of the day because you're in a compromised position in the first place, which is why you're having to defend. So I suppose, without further ado, let's get on with taking the inside line. So here we are with Steve Gaming once again. And, uh, you know, last time we talked about overtaking, this time it's all about defending. So we're actually going to look at what Steve Gaming does here to defend the position that he's got in first place. So we've got a good run up here, Slipstream. We talked about this earlier, about using Slipstream to get past your opponent. Steve Gaming in the middle of the road at the moment. He's going to make his decision now where he wants to go. He goes to the inside line. That means I'm on the outside here at this point. I can't really do much. I can't really go around the outside here. Uh, and potentially I'll try and push him into going tighter, but he keeps that position by defending the inside line. Now we're going to watch this as uh, we go around the circuit here. See, he's keeping his line. There's nowhere to overtake here, so it's absolutely fine doing that. So we're going to accelerate out the corner. We're then going to approach... The, uh, the hairpin, which is coming up. We're too far back here to make a big lunge. So again, we're going to have to try and use some form of slipstream to try and get past Steve Gaming. So as we come out this corner, you can see he hit the wall there slightly. So now all we have to do is get ourselves into the correct position in order to try and overtake Steve Gaming. And he's going to have to defend in some form to maintain that first position. So he goes to the right hand side, I go to the left hand side. Now you're thinking, excellent Tid, you've probably got this, it's the left hander coming up. It is, but then he goes into a right hander and then a right hander again. So Steve's taking the inside line for the next two corners, prepping the overtake. You can see there he's got a bit more momentum now, staying on that inside line because he knows, well he came back and then he's going to go back again, he knows that if I go on that, get on that inside, he's lost that position. I try and outbreak him, I can't do much about it, it's a clockwise circuit, again coming up to the inside, coming up to the chicane, he's on the inside line, can't go too wide here he keeps that position so you can see how taking the inside line there actually keeps you know he keeps first position which is exactly what i wanted to show so uh, let's jump to me now defending at brands hatch so here we are at brands hatch we're about to start lap number 13 so let me give you the situation first of all if you've not seen this race devil has two lap pressure tires of course in reality with the extreme tire wear that's like 30 lap pressure tires uh Matu has a one lap pressure tyre, so let's just call that 15. I'm not sure what the tyre wear rate was at the time, but of course it'll be quite high. Uh, and we've gone for the under undercut, which we showed in the overtaking video, which, so you will have seen parts of this situation before. So how do we defend from Devil now? Because Devil's going to have a significant advantage with those tyres. And of course, I'm just going to show you taking the inside line again. So coming up to here, Devil's got a good run on me here. So I take the inside line, sort of middle of the circuit here. Uh, Devil's going to have to take the very, very long way around in order to overtake. So that doesn't work there. Um, but Devil's going to have a better run out the corner, of course, because the angle was uh, less to go around the corner. So again, I go to the inside line and Devil is now on the outside. So coming into this right-hander. Devil is now going to be on the marbles as well as taking a longer distance. You can see he runs wide there and he's actually going to lose a position to Matu here as we then come into this right hander, which is very significant. So taking the inside line uh, means that the your opponent has to go on the marbles or the dirty side of the track going round the outside of a corner, which is hard. Trust me, you'll run wide as you just saw Devil do um, and take the longer distance. And now if you, you know, if you're a 100 meter sprint versus a 120 meter sprint, you know, that's why they offset the distances in track and field. You know, it takes longer to run 120 metres than 100. Same principle here. It takes longer to drive 200 metres than 100 metres. They've got to go the longer distance. So that's the reason why we take the inside line. And you can see I've kept the position, even though Devil had a significant advantage. And obviously circuit dependent, you'll then have to, you know, use it to use the, each circuit individually 
to try and maintain that position. Brands Hatch, very hard to overtake anyway, so taking the inside line is very, very critical. So as uh, we uh, leave that corner, we now have Matu behind us, but it's only got one lap pressure tyres, so we could potentially defend this a little bit better. Same situation here, Matu is right behind me here, but not close enough to make that overtake, so I can take my normal racing line. Coming out of here, you can see Matu is very close now on that radar as uh, we come up here. So, in theory, we can just do the exact same thing as last time. Stay to the inside line. Matu then has to go around the outside. So, as we come into this corner, you can see Matu tries to go for that outbreaking maneuver, hits the marbles, and run runs wide, basically. Unfortunately, there's then an incident after that. Uh, and in defending, sometimes incidents can happen, like that situation. I'm in an unfortunate position there. Um with what happened so basically he got dirt on his tires and that certainly hit me he has apologized for that but uh that is defending the inside line taking the inside line it's very straightforward to defend your position stay on the inside let them do all the hard work and a lot of the time it's very very difficult it's very hard to go around somebody uh, on the outside of a corner because as i've just said longer distance dirty side of the track you have to have such an advantage over them to make it work However, the swings and roundabouts to everything, but that is the easiest, most simplest way to defend your position, taking the inside line. So, the next thing we'll look at is actually stopping on the apex of a corner, which is sort of like taking the inside line, but it's the next step. So, let's have a look at that now. We're behind Key at Suzuka, and uh, Key's going to do the literal defending we were just talking about taking the inside line now just to explain the situation i have got much fresher tires than key in this situation a good four or five laps fresher tires so i have quite a significant advantage here and key's gonna have to defend for his life as i just said key's going to defend the inside line as best as he can uh because that's the easiest way to defend um and it's the strongest way to defend in the grand scheme of it you know you, you as i just said you have to make the opponent take the longer distance a lot harder to do and my tires are worn at this point as well so it's much harder to go around the outside in any given situation as i show here i can't get round you can see the marbles on the left i've got any further out i'm off into the grass anyway so key has been defending the uh, inside line here and ma maintaining his line basically i'm trying to look for a way past and not being able to do it fortunately heading to degna one um i'm the car behind here it's single file through here if you go too wide you're more than likely going to go off um, so we're going to come through here and now you're going to see Key start slowing down on the apex a little bit uh, Mainly because he's taken a tighter line um, So as we come into the hairpin, Key's on the inside as you would normally do So as we come through here, look, Key's had to drive very slowly to get around that corner Taking a much tighter line, so slow on the apex, stopping on the apex basically I can't get a good run out the corner because Key is there He's stopping any form of cutback and he's defending that very well So again, Spoon Taking the left hand side, the inside line. I said this is the easiest way to defend. It seems the most obvious, but look, it's happening. So again, Key defends it. Now coming to here, so Key is now stopped on the apex there, slowed down. He, he's obviously not got as much grip as I have, so he just stops. And I can't get momentum out the corner. Now I don't mean brake checking here, guys. I don't mean brake checking. I don't mean slamming on. It's slowing down on the apex. Being a couple of miles an hour slower, maintaining your line, it stops the car behind from doing anything. Now they may potentially they might push push you uh just on that overtake that was just a risky overtake that i tried which failed but okay each for a space but you know i don't mean stopping slamming on and stopping i mean slowing down the apex dropping that by a mile an hour or so uh, and that stops any form of undercut so stopping on the apex is critical to go with taking the inside line and well played key there with that defending a very good show of how to defend a position so boxing in, I don't mean as some form of unsportsmanlike conduct. What I mean by boxing in is sportsmanlike conduct. But where, you, for example, I've just overtaken somebody. So that car's going slightly slower than I am down the straight. And then there's a car behind me going even faster than both of us. Now, in this situation, if the car, if the place is too wide, uh, I could go and stay in one position. That guy can stay in another. And we both can sort of defend our positions here because that guy further back can't, it has nowhere to go. So he's either got to bumper draft me bumper draft the opponent or not touch any of us and he's just got to slow down so let's have a look at brand's hatch where this actually happened so lightning out up ahead Aug's actually stayed out done a non-stop strategy here so we're all looking to overtake Aug at this point i has got a fairly long way to go in the race here so potentially not going to defend as hard as he would maybe on lap 13 or 14 or potentially the final lap similar to what key did earlier on final lap is you know defend for your life sort of thing so we're behind Aug at this point and uh, well the first thing i'm going to try is an overtake up into druids uh, mainly because Ag doesn't defend it that much. So I come into here, slight tap. Obviously, that wasn't meant to happen, but you know, it's all fair game there. Slight little tap, 
out still keeps that position. We carry on. And I'm defending and attacking here at the same time. So I've got to be careful a little bit. I need to get past Aug as fast as I can. So again, coming up into this left-hander, I'm going to just go for a bit more of a lunge again. I can outbreak him significantly. I'm on much fresher tyres. Give each other room. And as we exit this corner, we're going into that situation where Aug's on my right and Devil is on my left. So I can just literally stay on the left-hand side, as I've done here. I then move over to the right to defend my position. But notice that Devil was boxed in. He couldn't go anywhere. And that is literally what I'm trying to demonstrate here. And uh, let's just revisit that just for a second and we'll slow it down. So again, here we are coming out of Graham Hill Bend. So you can see Devil's right behind us. And as I said earlier, Devil's got two that fresher tyres. So he's going to have an advantage here. Um, Aug's obviously non-stop. So we go in here. We break. Now at this point, notice on the radar, Devil's backed out of it here. So Devil's going for a good run out of this corner. And I want you to focus on that radar a little bit. Look at the advantage Devil has here coming out of this corner, right? And he's going to have slipstream as well. Me and Aug don't have slipstream here. So Devil's got the slipstream. You can see his car is much quicker here. But he's got nowhere to go. He's boxed in. So in this situation, he can't go anywhere. He's got to make a decision. I then go to the right. And this is a bit of a sneaky tactic. Because then Aug gets my slipstream, not Devil. To maybe give Aug that position. I then take my line for the corner. Um, and I think Devil does get that position. Because he has such an advantage over tyres. Uh, compared to Aug there. But that's what I mean by boxing in. Literally, Devil had nowhere to go, um, and therefore I stopped Devil overtaking, and also managed to overtake myself. Very simple little trick you can do, uh, defending your position. In a, it's sportsmanlike because you know, Devil has nowhere to go. You know the track is two car wide. What can he do? Uh, you know if there's three cars there, potentially three wide, and Devil stuck behind. It is sportsmanlike. Um, we don't mean here weaving across and like slamming the space off. We're literally there too wide. Nothing he could do. He's literally boxed in. A police tactic they use to stop a car. Same situation there. It stops a car from uh, making that pass. The cutback is next. Now, you're probably going, this is overtaking, Tidge, not defending. Well, yes, we did talk about it in overtaking, but it's also defending. So what I mean by this is the easiest way to overtake somebody is to outbreak them into a corner. And a lot of the time you will see people, especially in GT Sport, try and outbreak everybody else into a corner. We've seen it loads of times. And the main way I defend that position is with the cutback because they're just going to go completely aggressive into the corner and run wide. Let them run wide. Just do the nice little cutback. Let them get that position for about one second. You know, they go into that corner. Oh, look, they got the position. Oh, no, they've run wide. And you just go on the inside line and out the corner you actually go. But let's look at this in the opposite fashion now. Rather than showing me doing the cutback, let's have a look at somebody else doing the cutback. So Lightning is going to show us how this is done. Of course, the Cookie Monster. And uh, we're heading down to the chase. So we're going to have a bit of a run on Lightning here. Um, I thought Lightning was going to go in the pits as well, by the way, so just for the instant, that will happen a little bit later on. Um, so you can see Lightning in the middle of the road. He's now going to try and decide where to go. He realises he can't stay in the middle of the road there because there's just enough cars whips either side. We go down to the left. We then come in and we hard brake. We caught the brakes a little bit there. I'm not sure why I did that other than to try and make sure I outbroke Lightning, but that did not work. And then, as you can see, Lightning's on my outside now. The last corner being the left-hander, Lightning would have the inside line and would keep that position, defending it with the cutback, realising... I'd outbroke myself, he can just keep that position. But just to give you a better idea, let's slow that down a little bit uh, and just have a look at it again. So as you see here, we're approaching Lightning Slipstream. We've got a huge run on Lightning. So the first thing in your mind, if this is going to happen to you or you know, you're know, thinking about the cutback, is you know this person's going to have to break earlier than you because they're going so much faster than you down to this corner. So you can see we just missed Lightning's rear there. And as we go into this braking zone, um, look, where, look on the radar now. Uh, you'll see I break, I mean lightning break at the same point there. And I, for some reason, lift off the brakes. No idea why I do that. And that means I outbreak myself just that little bit. So lightning then goes for the nice lovely cut back here. I keep the car on the tracks. So, you know, it's a successful move in the first instance. But because lightning did the cut back to defend that position, he then has the inside line and a good run out of that corner as well. Um, now, I needed to go in the pits, which is a bit bad of me. So I had to then break and go in. I thought lightning was going to go in and he didn't. So then, uh, you know, I've lost out a little bit there. But I would have lost out anyway at that last corner. And that's the cutback, using it in that sort of way. Because a lot of people, as I said, will always try and outbreak the person to overtake. Not necessarily do more of the complex moves, which we discussed in the previous driving school. So well played, Lightning. So now we get on to strategic defending. Now this isn't direct defending, like taking the inside line, slowing down the apex, or whatever it might be. Um, this is more defending, potentially like early on in a race, but to defend a position later on in a race. 
that might sound completely mind-blowing here, but it's very similar to the tyre strategies that we mentioned in the overtaking. So you might start on a different tyre, and we are going to look at that, starting on a different tyre. A harder compound, so you've got less grip initially. Uh, you might be going then for the non-stops, and later on you're defending that position from the person who potentially has stopped uh, in the pits. Um, and it's how about or how you maintain your position, or maybe even go up, as I say, this can be used for overtaking as well, um, in order to gain an advantage. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to jump back to that top 16 superstars race, uh, and we're going to have a look at what Jomas did there. Now, unfortunately, I don't have to replay, so we're looking at it from my perspective, but even so, the same situation happened. This is what to look out for and do. So, Bathurst, Jomas is up ahead here. We've got SVDR right behind Jomas and Adam, then Lightning, then myself, then Sutsu behind. So, uh, Jomas is on hard tyres at this point. So, SVDR is obviously going to go for the overtake. Now, obviously, early on in the race, the harder tyre is going to be much slower than the softer compound tyre. But Jomas is in the Ferrari, which is a very sketchy car at the best of times. Um, so, he's going to have to be very strategic with his defending here. In, in terms of... Not to defend too much, but, you know, as you can see here, we've got a bit of a train form in here. You're slowing down the softer runners, which is always very helpful for the end of the race, which is my point here with this sort of driving. Don't defend too hard. You'll lose so much time yourself to other drivers. However, just defending a little bit, you know, making sure maybe you only lose one place here and there initially. Let the uh, medium tyre guys uh, pit. You stay out and go for that non-stop strategy. Might work out because... As you see in here, going up the hill, all the softer compound tyres, we're not getting the advantage of the softer compound tyre. We're stuck behind Jomas. Very strategic defending here. So, SPDR has gone now. You can see that. He's like literally disappeared into the distance. And that is the time lost for any of us guys here on medium tyres. So, we continue on now. And uh, Adam's going to be the first, next person to look at Jomas and trying to get that overtake. You can see that gap there in front there. Jomas to SPDR. That's well over a second. Um, so, that's the time lost for us guys. You know, we're stuck in the train. We can't overtake going up the hill. Very strategic defending. Uh, I realise you can only do this at certain tracks, but even so, it's still strategic defending. Even defending by letting off for a position, getting that slipstream, just to help you get those faster lap times later on in the race, is also beneficial to you. So do keep that in mind uh, when thinking about defending. That letting somebody go may actually benefit you more than defending that position because they'll help you pull you along a little bit get you to a slightly like two or three tenths faster lap because you got a bit of slipstream um, and then they, maybe they go in the pits maybe they don't maybe you're both on non-stops but your car's weaker it can always help so Jomas has now lost another position to Adam uh, just getting back to the strategic uh, defending with tyres in this situation but I say that slipstream thing will work so Jomas stays to the left here that's very clear uh, so Lightning's going to go to the right and you're going to see Jomas just break that tiny bit earlier here not to defend too much uh, and goes into the corner, all very nice. Now, we're stuck behind Jomas at this point. And we're going to lose out a significant amount of time because Jomas is in front of us on the harder compound tyre. We've not hit that crossover point. And weirdly enough, we're actually on the pit stop lap if we were going flat out. So we've actually lost out big style in terms of time, uh, you know, the, the amount of pace we would have had on the medium tyres uh, because Jomas has been very good with causing a train, causing people to drive much slower, and that for helps him... Uh, towards the end of the race with where he is going to finish. So going through here, absolutely fine. So we're just getting that crossover point now, as you can see, because Lightning isn't pulling away as much um, as we now come into here. So Jomas just coming down. Again, he's struggling a little bit on those harder tyres. Through here, look at the gap we're losing now to Lightning. Jomas makes a mistake, so we hit Jomas there. Lightning's gone a second in the distance. Again, that's time we've lost being behind somebody else there. So our softer compound tyre has not worked out in his first stint because... Jomas, and I know a couple of other guys ahead as well have all chosen the hard tyre. Just to demonstrate that, as you can see, Jomas is up ahead. Actually ahead of us at this point. So, you know, be, slowing us all down in that train has helped him significantly in uh, what is a very sketchy car at this track. And you're also going to see SVDR there go for a defensive move, taking the inside line. We talked about it earlier. Coming around this last corner. And Jomas has kept that ninth position, even though we overtook. So we lost out because we didn't get a good, uh, a good run on our softer compound tyres. Uh, and yeah, we lose out and Jomas keeps it with some strategic defending there, you know, going up the hill, being the leader of the train. We can't do much about it. Uh, and Jomas keeps that position. So strategic defending, keep that in mind. Think of the long game. Don't just think of the short game here. Think about what drivers are doing around you, who is going to help you along, who is better to follow, where it's better to be ahead of the train to slow other people down, where it doesn't lose you any time. Think of efficiency here. Think of the end game. 
And finally, we have breaking the slipstream. So in a nutshell, breaking the slipstream, all we're talking about here is literally you take a corner as normal, you leave that corner, and maybe you've got one car behind you. Maybe you've got a train of cars behind you, and it's uh, getting really sketchy. So if you break the slipstream just initially, you know, you make sure that they get a little bit of air behind them, it might slow them down by that one mile an hour. And that one mile an hour may be critical at the end of the straight in the fact that you might not have to defend anymore, or you've gained that extra five meters, or have a five meter extra advantage that you didn't have initially uh, so you can defend better or potentially take the corner as normal and actually keep that momentum going um, throughout the next lap um, so yeah let's have a look at that now so here we are in the Audi TT a very quick car in a straight line and uh, Mr. Heiser or MR Heiser <laughs> I know it's a team guys but I just call it Mr. Heiser anyway uh, is right behind me uh, and uh, yeah we're coming up to a straight on the Majore going in reverse and uh, you're going to watch me now try and break the slipstream so initially we're just going straight have up behind me I realise we're the same speed so he's going to start catching up that speed so I quickly dart left at that point there's a point in time in there where uh, Heiser does not have the slipstream as I go to the left and that saves me a little bit of time as you can see there he caught up to me but couldn't make a move on me very good driving defensive driving because I'm breaking that slipstream lap later here we go again into the left now this time we're gonna go to the left straight away but not gonna go all the way to the left so that's a bit unpredictable and again we can come to the right now you gotta be careful while doing this because Breaking the slipstream does not mean you can weave all over the place. You normally can make one move and then take your racing line, which is what we do in both those scenarios. So here we go with Adam. Now, I prefer Adam's method of doing this because it's a bit more surprising rather than doing it very early on out of a corner. So as you can see, we are behind Adam in the Aston Martin. Aston Martin is very quick as well to get up to speed, whereas other cars have better top end speed. So we're going to come into this last corner at Fuji. And normally you'd expect Adam to go right to the right side straight away, but he doesn't. So now we begin to relax. We think, okay, he's just going to stay there. He's going to stay. Oh, suddenly he moves over. And that causes a bit of tie wear in my car as well. So just doing that, you know, I lose a little bit of slipstream and I get a bit more tie wear on the straight, which is never good. Now, as you can see, Adam went to the right and then came back to the left, which is the, uh, you know, making the breaking the slipstream and then the uh, back to the racing line thing that I mentioned earlier on and then he just has his defensive move into the corner that's perfect defending perfect racing racing from Adam there so when you think about breaking the slipstream do not weave all the way down the straight that is not sportsmanlike and it's not very good racing and it's banned in a few racing series just make one move and then you can take your racing line one move so just think about that, um, you know, going into these races and defending and breaking the slipstream. But that's going to be it, guys, for this video on defending. I hope you've enjoyed it. And again, a slightly different to um, the overtaking one. We've shown a lot of examples again. You know, taking the inside line is the primary example of how to defend. Uh, stopping on the apex, of course, slowing down, I mean by that. Uh, so Key did a good example there. Uh, boxing in, in a sensible way, as uh, we showed at Brands Hatch. Uh, the cutback, of course both an offensive and defensive move that you can use strategic defensive driving in terms of tire strategy potentially or you know just holding people up in an efficient way uh, and then breaking the slipstream i'll say guys i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, there will be a few more episodes to come in of course psychology is next so make sure you tune in for those uh, but that's it for me for now thanks very much for watching i will see you in the next video